Dirk, congratulations on a very strong quarter. Currency impact challenged you this quarter. What can you do to prepare for the next several quarters and what do you see in terms of currency impact? Uh, well, thank you for having me, Bonnie and, uh, and Guy. Um, yes, currency impacted us. Um, we are a global company with 75% of our sales outside of North America. So as a consequence, uh, that will have its effect as these uh, currencies around the world have uh, variation against the US dollar. I think over the longer term, though, it is an interesting setup. Uh, growth in snacking, which is our core business, will come mostly from emerging markets and from overseas markets. So as a company, we are well set up. Uh, the exchange rate will have its effect on a quarter to quarter basis and particularly this quarter if you compare where the exchange rates were a year ago there's quite a substantial effect. As we go through the year the difference between what we currently think this year's exchange rate will be versus where it was last year that difference will start to ease and uh, near the end of the year it, it will be more or less uh, equal. But yes the, if, if you're a company like ours if you look at it short term you will have these ups and downs our uh, thinking about that is that the long-term potential and the long-term benefit from having the exposure to the emerging markets outweighs the short-term uh, currency uh, uh, variation that you can see. Now, you successfully adapted to the China market in the wafer category specifically. Also in India, you launched Choco Bakery and it's been doing pretty well. What kind of growth rates are you hoping for from both countries? Well, at the moment, India has been for a while in double-digit territory. Uh, China, about two years ago, was really not growing that well. We are now in, in uh, getting to high single digit. And it's, it's our objective to have both staying into double-digit territory uh, strongly and, and with some consistency. And, and we see the momentum and we think that both will get there. There's, there's huge opportunity. Uh, our product range is not yet very wide our distributions in the stores. We still have whole areas of China and whole areas of India where we're not that well distributed. Uh, so I, I think there's plenty of opportunity for us to keep that double digit growth in those markets. Good morning. Uh, it's Guy in London. Can I ask you a little question about what's happening in the middle of the P&L? What's happening with margins right now? What I'm hearing from more and more companies, particularly in North America, but elsewhere as well, is that they're having to pay their people more. Are you having to pay your people more? And what effect is that likely to have? Yes, we, we, we do. Um, the effect is, uh, is in line with, with our expectations. Um, it's not really going to have a big effect on, on our bottom line. Um, obviously, we're doing well, so also from an incentive perspective, I think uh, it's going to be a good year for the people at Mondelez. Um, but uh, we, we include that into, uh, into, our, uh, into our calculations. And uh, at this stage, we don't feel that that's going to throw us off for the year uh, or so. Um, maybe another, okay. uh, another area that's also often mentioned is, is the input costs. Um, yeah, sure, and that's certainly, certainly those, a factor. I think, Can are I just currently in line line with that? Yeah. Can I just pick up? Sorry to interrupt. Can I just pick up? Joe Biden is talking about a minimum wage in the United States of 15 bucks an hour. That is significantly above where it is now. Would that affect you? I'm just kind of curious the politics and whether or not you're starting to think about the impact that that could have in the North American market. In, in our case, it will not have an effect if I think about uh, the workers in our factories or the merchandisers we have in the stores. They're, they're well above that, that minimum level. Uh, I assume that there's a number of areas where that would have an effect, but uh, in our particular case, it, it will not have a, an effect at all. Dirk, some competitors like Kraft Heinz have talked about higher shipping costs and the need for continuing to increase prices or decrease volume in packaging, let's say, in order to hold on to those margins. You have managed to expand those margins by 30 basis points, a pretty whopping performance this quarter. How do you keep those margins that wide? Do you need to continue to raise prices? Well, first of all, the, the, the thing that, that we've done is that let's, let's lose a little bit that obsession with percentage margin and make all our decisions to keep our percentage margin. 
we're interested in dollar growth of our margin. And, and one of the biggest drivers that we can have is more volume through our plants. When, once you get more volume growth, uh, the cost in your plant is largely the same. Uh, and so you get a big benefit from that extra volume. That extra volume, I can say, comes at an, an, an additional margin if you want. So driving volume growth is, is the main thing that we're looking for. At the same time, we also do cost programs and optimization programs and continuous improvement, which also has an effect. But, but again, we, we're not, it, it's a nice side effect that our gross profit margin goes up. What I'm more interested in is how much dollars do we add to that gross profit margin and how much of that can we reinvest to, to keep the virtuous cycle that we're currently in going. Dirk. But uh, yes, it's, it's driven by good cost management and the volumes. Mm. Where are you most concerned about sourcing raw materials given the tariff situation that we have around the world, not just between the United States and other countries? What materials, agriculture and otherwise, are you preparing to maybe see price increases in? Um, in, in fact, it's not in, in materials that we see the biggest issue. It's, it's in uh, uh, freight costs around the world. There's a scarcity of truck drivers. And, and we, we have seen those costs really uh, go up quite a lot. So that's our, our main worry. And then we see the normal fluctuations in, in our raw materials. Uh, but there's nothing at this moment that particularly spikes our interest. Since we are uh, one of the biggest uh, chocolate uh, uh, producers in the world, cocoa is of particular interest to us. At the moment, pricing is, is, is reasonable. Uh, I, I would uh, say that in cocoa, what's much more important for us is, is to make it more and more sustainable. And, and that might have a little bit of a price effect in our cocoa price. But we think that is really the, the thing that we should be uh, striving for. And we announced yesterday that uh, by 2025, 100% uh, of our cocoa supply will be sustainably sourced. And, uh, and that, I think, is, is for us at this stage more important than, than trying to manage some of the input costs.